Good morning, good morning, good morning. So excited to be here in the I Am Her platform. We are here because her is healed, empowered, and resilient. And if you haven't made it there yet, if you are not I Am Her yet, we are here to empower you to get to that place where you are healed and you can empower others because of the power within you and be resilient through what it is. So I am honored to be here on um, Saturday Shift. I will be here every first Saturday talking about shifting through grief and beyond loss. So I'm excited. First, I'm excited to listen to talk about the shift, but let's not get too far. I want to introduce myself because I forget to do that and I'm in someone else's platform. So this morning, I just want to tell you, I am Courtney Lee Smith. If you see, that's who um, posted it here. You can just join me on Facebook, Courtney Lee Smith. And I am the master relationship mechanic at the Relationship Service Station where we work on relationship death. We're making sure we have preventive and maintenance um, programs and services for relationship death. What does relationship death mean? It's a spiritual, mental, and a physical death. So we're talking about anything that you are grieving, separation, grieving loss, grieving divorce, grieving because you all have division and can't come into agreement within your marriage so that everyone can have a thriving relationship. So we won't thrive and not just surviving. So today I'm going to talk about this shift. Um, and like I said, it's a relationship service station. So I'm going to talk about it in the analogy of a car. We are the most phenomenal vehicle that God created. We are better than the vehicles we jump into to take us from place to place. Because we are the vehicles that God uses to get his message from one person to another. The vehicle that God uses to have his things done here on earth. So he needs us to be vehicles that run great. He wants us to run to our best ability. But there are things that happen that cause us not to be at 100 all the time. And that's just a fact of life. So we're talking about today how to shift to become a better vehicle, not to be stuck. Three main things I want to go over to today is about, first of all, is your vehicle ruined if it's turned off in gear? You know, because this, this, this analogy, if things are turned off, and we hadn't physically put ourselves in park and hadn't taken the time to really get to it. But we know life does not allow us always preparation. Because if you were on this line looking, you weren't prepared for your spouse to die necessarily. You weren't prepared for your loved one to move on without you. You weren't prepared for the loss. That means you were caught off guard. That means you were turned off and you weren't in park because you weren't in a position. So it caught you off guard. So there are three things that happen when you're not in park. That means you're not prepared to stop. You're not prepared for what is to come. So there are three things that happen in a vehicle, in a vehicle, when we're not prepared for this loss that occurs in our lives. So let's think about it. We give up our keys. We can't get our keys out of the car. If you didn't know, you can't get your keys out of the car when you are not in park. When you have not been prepared, your keys are locked in the car. So we're going to talk about today how to get access again to your keys, how to get access back to your keys. Because we all need access to our keys because the keys in life gets us to other places. We need those keys to unlock things in our lives. So there are a lot of things that's locked up in our lives because our keys are caught up in the car because we are stuck in gear. So that's why we got to shift back in gear. So one more, one, not number one thing is we're going to talk about how to get access to our keys. The second thing is we're going to talk about is how to gain back control. Because what happens when you're already moving, already moving, and your car is thrown out of gear? Not park. We're not talking about park now. You're moving and your car is also thrown into park, thrown, thrown into neutral, and you're moving. You lose control because what happens, it sends a message to this transmission, to this engine in the brain. And it is saying it locks up the brakes and it locks up the power steering because it says we're supposed to be doing something else besides driving but your car wheels are still in motion. So you lose control. You're not able to determine if you want to go to the left, if you want to go to the right, if you want to say study in the middle of the road. But that is where we 
have to gain back control. We have to get back in gear. We have to do a shift. We have to get back in gear to what it is we're trying to do. Do we want to get back in drive? Do we want to accelerate? Do we want to move? Do we want to create motion? That's, that's what we have to do. So we have to gain back control. And this third thing is we got to get out of neutral. A lot of us are just riding out life. We have no acceleration. We are just rolling back or rolling down. And that's what happens in neutral. But when you're at a flat place and there's nothing going on in your life, there is no movement in your life. And that is what happens. Your life is only in movement when good, when you're going downhill, things are going bad, or either when things are just going up. You, you got a high and you got a low, but you have nothing that happens in your life when it's at a plateau. So your life is only in motion within chaos. But you need to, we have to learn how to function when things are going good according to God's will too. We have to be able to move out of neutral in our lives. So the three things that we're going to talk about how to do is gain access back to our keys. And we lost access to our keys because we were caught off guard. We were not able to put our life in to park and be prepared for that loss. So now we're... Were we caught off guard? A lot of times we are not willing to get back into the vehicle. We don't want to find that place. We don't want to identify that place. But we got to identify what caused us to stop. What caused us to stop? What caused us to give up? What caused us to stop? What caused us to pause? And it is more than the actual losing of an individual or loss of the things. What is that emotion that is going on? Is it that we feel like we've lost control? Is it feel like that things aren't going our way? What is it that is actually physically going on that is saying, hey, I got to stop. I got to stop right here. I don't want to get back in this car again. I don't want to do this again. But we got to get our keys because if once we get our keys, we can access what God has given us. So we got to get back access to these keys. And we have to be honest with ourselves in order to make this next shift. Because we have to get back into park in order to get our keys. We have to get this engine running. And so to get our engine running, we got to start back over where it is that the loss occurred. Identify the loss. Be real about the loss. And have the strength to start the vehicle back up. A lot of us have broken down and we've decided to stop at the loss. Your life is not over. You are not just supposed to be moving along without a purpose. Get your keys back. Get access to keys. That's, that's the first thing. Access to your keys. Your keys. All of us have keys that God has given us to do what it is that God has assigned us to do. And you say, well, what is the keys? Most people's key rings have, have more than just the car key to crank it up. So you get crunk up. Now you're able to put your car back in park and take the keys out and find out there's a key to happiness to get into your house. There's a key to joy to get back into your soul. There are various keys on this ring besides just starting yourself up. And it's not just the start that you want to do. You want to have motion. You want to be able to take yourself places. But as I said, God designed us as a wonderful, magnificent vehicle for us to help carry other people through, to take us to where God has assigned us. And until you get access to those keys, you are stuck wherever that loss has occurred. And so that's where we got to make that first shift. We got to get back in the car. Wherever it is that that event has occurred, and most of us are afraid to go back to that moment. Afraid to go back to that announcement of the death. Afraid to go back to that diagnosis because we had something. Afraid to go back to where we lost that promotion. Afraid to go back where we lost that home. Afraid to go back to where we lost our love. Afraid to go back to wherever that loss occurred. But we got to really go back in our minds and say, where did I allow life to turn me off at? Wherever life turns you off at, you have to be willing to go back and say, I'm willing to be turned back on and move out of this situation because this situation is not going to have me stuck here because I need my keys. That's number one. You need your keys. Number two was getting back control of your vehicle. 
when you're not at a plateau. So when you are at a place and you are already in motion, have us, we've, we've been in that place and we're in good motion. And then life happens. Life happens. Not the best part of life that happens because you were not in caregiver mode. You did not know that you were getting ready to lose a loved one. It just happened. Someone else took the life of your loved one. An accident happened, but life happened. So when life happened, you were in motion. You were in motion, but your car got thrown out of gear. And now you're in a place where you have lost control. You have no capability to stir. You have no capability to put the brakes on. What are you going to do? How do you take back control of your life? How many of us are just Hit, knocking over people's mailboxes, curving off the road, not doing what it is that God has called us to do, but we are just allowing everything else to push us in a direction. If we're going down a hill, we just flow down. We don't care what gets hit. We don't care what else happens. We got to get out of the motion of out of control. How do we get our control back? We get our control back by getting into God's word so that we can get back in motion going the appropriate way. God gives us control. A lot of us think we don't have any control, but self-control is, is a spirit. We have to have self-control. Self-control is a spirit of the Holy Spirit. So ask God for help. Ask the Holy Spirit. That's one of the things that we really don't do. According to Jeremiah 33, we do not ask God for help. A lot of times we are still in the vehicle going all kinds of ways and wondering when, are we, when is the power steering just magically going to come back in and get us where we need to be. Ask God to help us get this car back into gear so that we can get into a controlled motion. Not out of control. And grief will have you out of control because it will have your emotions allowing you to just go all over the place. It will allow you to start treating people like you're not supposed to be treating them. It would allow you to start mistreating yourself. It will allow you to start mistreating your kids. It would allow you to start mistreating everything that God has given you. So we have to be very careful to get ourselves back in control so that we're in control of the motion where we're going. And when I say motion, it's our spiritual mind. It's our physical mind. It's our physical bodies. Are we in control of the things that we are doing in our lives? So it's, 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 it's very hard sometimes to see if we're doing the right things. But sometimes somebody else is in the vehicle with you and they're saying, hey, I want to go. I need to go in another direction. Please listen. Somebody's screaming that you just hit something. Please listen. And that's how you know you're out of control. You're out of control when nobody wants to ride with you because you have no gear. So let's shift back into a, an appropriate gear of drive. The appropriate gear of drive so we can be moving in the right direction and be in control of our live situation. So getting back access to the keys. Getting control of our vehicle, ourselves, not trying to control other people, getting control of our grief, not how other people grieve, not how other people are dealing with the loss, not how other people are expecting you. You get control for you. And number three, which is also very important, get out of neutral. Get out of neutral with a point that you don't, you had saying, I don't care about anything else. I don't care how it goes. I'm just going to float along in life, but you're not living life abundantly. This is not what is called for you. Get out of neutral. Neutral is going to get you nowhere because neutral is only emotion. When you own a hill, you're going to go up or you're going to go back. Up or back. So you're just like on a seesaw, just going up and down according to the balance of life. So that means you only have motion when chaos is going on. So get out of neutral. Neutral means you have given up on any expectations. You've given up on God actually fulfilling your promises when you are just in neutral because you have no acceleration. You have no capability to move on your own. You only move at the whim of chaos. And a lot of us get caught up in chaos which looks like really just responsive behavior. There is nothing that you are prepared for. There is nothing that you have set out to do. You have no plans. You have no vision. And that is how you know you're riding along in neutral. Because whatever comes along, you either slide down with it or slide forward with it. And you're just sliding through in life in neutral. 
And that is how you determine that you're in neutral because you're on this routine and it is just rope, but it is getting you nowhere. What it says, you're caught up in a cycle. And that's what we have to do. We got to move our cars out of neutral so we can have a plan. We can have a vision and we can actually stand on God's promises. So those three things is what we're coming here to do. So you can be healed, empowered, and resilient. Is we have to get the keys back in our lives for us to be able to get to the point we can crank these engines back up. Our bodies, which our engines are our mind, our spirit, so that we can be moving according to God's plan. This vehicle that God created, this wonderful, nominal creation he did. And I'm pointing at me because I'm speaking to me, but I need you to do this to you today. I am a wonderful, phenomenal vehicle that God created because he has somewhere for me to go. He has some people for me to get in and take them for a ride. He has places and things he wants me to see and to be able to accomplish according to his word and according to his will. This vehicle, you, you got me? So say this vehicle. So whatever it is, and I can say whatever it is because I have lost lots. Not just people, just not things, but it has come. Even health, finances, whatever the loss is, we have to get outside of woe is me and get back in this vehicle and say, my God and his will. So get back in the vehicle, get access to your keys so you can unlock the things that God has for you. And I know I'm bad about time, you all, so I'm not really sure how long I've been in here jabbing along. Let me see if I can look at the clock here. I got a few more minutes with you all. Um, so a few more minutes. So in this closing, I want to give you an assignment. An assignment, because that's what a workshop is about, besides just giving you three topics, three good things. So in these three good things, you know, about access to your keys, identify what caused you to break down where you are. Something that came and you weren't prepared for. Identify it and go back to it. Get in the vehicle and move beyond that point. Get in the vehicle and move beyond that point. And you say, well, I moved beyond that point. No, you haven't. Because a lot of people say, well, I don't think about it. Yes, you do. You're thinking about it because you are afraid that it's going to happen again. If you're in fear, if you're in a place of fear because you feel like you're going to lose something again or not be able to get another raise or a promotion, you're afraid to do something when God whispers in your ear to go to this place, that fear means that you are not truly in motion. That means you're stuck in that place of fear. Go back to that fear and call that devil a lie and say, I'm not afraid. I'm walking in faith beyond this moment and getting past this. So that is your assignment. Walk in faith and get beyond that moment. Crank it up. You ain't got to go far. I just need you to get your keys out the car. You don't have to go far. Just get your keys back out the car. And so, after you get your keys out of the car, make a decision. Start writing a plan. Get in a vision. And that's how you get control back over your life. That's how you get the you gain back control. That's how you get out of neutral. And so, this assignment will help you move through this month of March. And it was, will empower you to actually be able actually be able to enjoy what is it coming up more daylight so you can function because we don't want to be in the dark when we're having the opportunity to get more light so i've enjoyed jumping in here giving you a little bit of 20 minutes this morning i know it's like a little early wake up so we're shifting through if you want to connect with me in any other way, you can jump on my Facebook page at the Relationship Service Station where we're putting quotes, always talking about what we're doing. That's the Relationship Service Station on Facebook. Or if you want to join me on the Instagram, it is the Master Relationship Mechanic and it's Master Relationship Mechanic on Instagram. And I thank you all for giving me your early morning minutes and definitely share it out and tell people what are we doing to shift beyond what are we doing to get through grief not out of grief but through grief we can drive through grief you all we don't have to stop we don't let it have to let it end our lives we can get out of neutral so i thank you all for letting me jump in and be a part of your morning